Hello everyone, welcome to another one of my videos. I apologize for taking so long to create another one of my videos, especially when I created that little teaser trailer of sorts of the board games that I would, would have reviewed if I had gone along with the plan, but I've been a little under the weather lately and uh, yeah, I'm still sort of recovering right now, but I'm, uh, I'm better and yeah, I'm well enough to do another review of a board game but it's not going to be the board games that I mentioned in one of my previous videos I got myself a really neat little board game and I thought I should review that first to start the new year off with so yeah the board game I have today for reviewing is called Vendetta the hit game pretty interesting board game a very very dangerous premise very dark premise based in 1930s you know, the Italian Mafia thing, the whole Godfather movie thing going on there, so that's the theme. But it's basically a variation of Parcheesi or Ludo, whichever one you're familiar with, depending on the region you're from. Where I'm from in Lahore, we, we call it Ludo, but in the West they call it Parcheesi, so yeah. It's originally a Western game uh, that was uh, adopted by the East more than the West. Uh, kind of like uh, chess, but the other way around. The chess was Eastern and the West adopted it. Uh, far better than the East ever did. So, yeah. So this is Vendetta. The reason why I compare this to chess is because the way the game works is that you have a couple of henchmen. Like, uh, we've got around like a squad of henchmen, around eight of them. And then you have this one special piece that is the godfather piece or the boss piece. That's the boss of the, of the, of the mafia family that you're, you'll be playing. So yeah, before I uh, get into the details, I should unbox this and let's go ahead and do that. So I lift up the lid like that. And as you can see, the arrangement is quite neat. Everything is in its little compartment there. So yeah, very organized the way the box and the, and the pieces and everything, how, they, how the box is designed itself. So yeah, you'll notice that we've got a lot of pieces here actually. You've got You've got uh, four types of uh, pieces, uh, the each ranging from yellow, green, pink, blue. So you, yeah, you get to pick a color, so you can play uh, with up to three other players along with yourself. So yeah, and then you have these little Hitman pieces, and you'll know what these are about in a while. So I'll just keep this aside for now. The game comes with uh, two six-sided dice. I'll leave that on the side, and I'll lift this up just real quick. And there's a really neat mechanic to the game that's kind of like the novelty of it. It's like a spinner. There's just like a thing that spins. And depending on where the spinner stops, the game it goes accordingly. And basically, this is the spinner right here. And the two hitmen that I just showed you attach right here in the hole. There's like a peg here. It goes in the hole right here. And there's a little arrow underneath, if you can see here, if there's a little arrow underneath this uh, hitman and you're supposed to align it to the edge of the, of the spinner as best as you can. So yeah, there we go. I'll do the other one as well. There's two hitmen that go on the spinner wheel, the wheel of death basically. By the way, there's a, I think there's two other variations of this board game. Uh, I think this one's the UK version, and I think there's an American or a German version. And uh, yeah, the only difference between those two versions, uh, those two versions and this one, is that I think the Godfather piece uh, is uh, not completely eliminated. Well, you'll understand this as I go through the review. I shouldn't just, you know, jump too far ahead. So yeah. So now we have these pieces, we'll, be, uh, we'll just uh, leave these aside for now because we need to set up the board first. And this here's the board. Got a little rule book. Don't worry about that one, that's, a, that's, something, that's something that doesn't belong in there. So, yeah. so here's the board, I'm sorry about that. Here's the board. And open it like that. And this spinner wheel comes with a little base. This base attaches onto the board. Like that, yeah, try to get those two pegs to fit neatly in those holes. 
So yeah, now that they're nice and snug, we can put the spinner spinner wheel or the wheel of death on top of it. So that's how it works. Now I'm gonna start to demonstrate how the game works by using two players. So in fact I should probably pick this one and this one. So that's green and blue. So blue gets his pieces on his little empire base right here. As you can notice, there's four families, four mafia families that you can choose from. So yeah, <clears throat> as I was saying, there's uh, four families that you can choose from. There's the uh, Al Ricottis represented in the yellow color, and uh, Louis Lorenzo's in green, Bugsy Stefano's in pink or red, and Fatso Mazzoni's in blue. So yeah, we've got the blue pieces right here. These are the little henchman pieces. They're represented like so. Pretty neat. I like how they're designed. It's very stylized, but I like it. They're like carrying a little briefcase of sorts or a little gun carrier. It's, yeah, a Tommy gun or something in there. And then this is the little godfather piece. This is your main guy. So basically the object of the game is to take your godfather around the board from your empire base back into your empire base by the same by ex by the exact number on the die as in if you're if you're three spaces away from going into your empire base then you need to get the three you can't go into the four or five you have to get the exact number so yeah it gets a little tricky when you're trying to get your godfather in especially during the end game so yeah so you have all your pieces in your base like that so blue has all his pieces there and now we're going to place the green pieces in there representing the second player in the game so yeah that's how you're supposed to set up when you're playing a two-player game you're supposed to be on opposite sides so yeah and then you have the green ones here and each mafia family or each player has eight henchmen and the godfather piece these two godfather pieces right here so these two are the ones fighting it out they're fighting the war using their henchmen trying to make it around the board win the game try not to get assassinated and yeah let me just get down into how this game so yeah <clears throat> as i was saying i'm just gonna start explaining how this game works so basically what happens is players go turn by turn rolling the dice for example if it's blue's turn blue rolls the dice and he's gotten a five five right so what he can do is the way he can move his pieces around the board is he can move each piece a number on the die or he can move the total number on with one piece for example he could he could move one henchman one two three four five that's the number on one die and then he could move the the other die the number on the other die with the other henchman one two three four five so that's essentially a double roll there so what happens is when every time you roll a double you get to roll once more and then that's it even if you roll another double so yeah so the uh, blue has a double so he gets to roll again and now he's got a one one so that, like i said even if you roll a double twice it only goes once so yeah you've got one one here so you can move, move around the board like that now <clears throat> There are certain spaces on the board that have special uh, functions to them. For example, every time you land on a hit, every time one of your pieces lands on a hit space or a hit square right here uh, or along the along the circular board, circular pathway or whatever that's made around the board, you get to spin the wheel of death. And if by chance one of your opponent's pieces lands in the sights of one of the hitmen here, he is eliminated off of the board like that so that's the basic uh basic way basic rules of how to play the game so yeah as else else play the game along you have a better idea of how the game works there's other spaces around the board as well let me just quickly go through those for example the fbi space is right here these spaces the godfather can never land on so yeah your henchman can land on these spaces just fine but your godfather can never land on any of these FBI spaces. And <clears throat> there's another neat trick to this. The reason why this is like 
Parcheesi or a variation of Parcheesi or Ludo is because there's a way to kind of take your opponent out. For example, if you have a henchman here, pl the player blue has a henchman here, and the green player is probably around here, and somehow he rolls a three, like that, and he goes one, two, three on the blue player, on, this, on the space where the blue player was, and he gets to take the blue player hostage. Now, if you notice around the board, each space has a little hostage corner. So once you have a player land on another player's piece, he gets to take that piece hostage. So that, that piece is kept onto that little hostage corner there, representing that he's been taken hostage by this player. In this case, the green player has taken the blue player hostage. So in order to completely, now this piece cannot move. Blue, the blue player cannot move this piece unless he finds a way to get another one of his pieces to land the... Yeah, as I was saying, <clears throat> in order for the blue player to essentially rescue and eliminate the green uh, henchman here, he has to uh, rescue his henchman piece and eliminate the green player. He has to bring another one of his pieces around the board onto the same square somehow so that he can eliminate the green piece and also rescue his buddy right there, freeing his buddy henchman but if the green player brings his second henchman onto the same square while he has the blue piece hostage the blue piece gets eliminated off of the board and if in a situation where a piece has been taken hostage and somebody rolls a spinner here for example if green rolls a spin he gets to eliminate if the hitman lands on if hitman lands on that space the blue player gets eliminated because he's taken hostage, plus it was uh, the green player that spun the wheel. Whoever gets to spin the wheel is the one making the shot. So, yeah. So, if it was the blue player that spun the wheel and it, it landed on the same space that he has uh, one of his pieces hostage on, then he has the chance to eliminate the green uh, player's henchman that has taken his piece hostage. So, that's how it works. So, let's just quickly go through a quick... Uh, rundown of the game and let's quickly play this and see how the game mechanics all work together pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward there's not much to well there's not much of a learning curve to the game and there's it's part strategy part luck just like part GC or Ludo but I think it's got a, a bit more strategy to it than your your uh, more conventional Parcheesi or Ludo. So, and plus the spinning wheel right here, it makes for a really interesting gameplay and also adds. A, a, you could you could say that it has a bit of skill to it as well because you have to be really good sometimes to get it exactly on the space that you want the two hen henchmen to land on. So yeah, there's part skill, part luck there, and I think it's a pretty neat balance. Uh, one more thing. Uh, Two more things actually. You notice these spaces with the hearts on them. These spaces represent the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Whatever that is from one of the Godfather movies or something. Some big mafia event, I guess. St. Uh, St. Valentine's Massacre Day or something. Anyway, what these spaces basically represent is that um, any or all pieces on this space can be eliminated by a single shot, by a single spin of the wheel. For example, if there were three henchmen here, of a, of a player and by some unfortunate chance one of the hitmen lands on that space all the play, all the pieces on that space will be eliminated in that one turn in that one spin of the wheel so yeah this is a very dangerous space right here so yeah that's what the uh, these two spaces mean, the one with the hearts, and then there's one little space right here, one space throughout the whole board, just one little space that is probably the worst space for you, for someone to land on, because as soon as you land on that space, which is the squealer removed space right here, you have to take one of your pieces off of the board, essentially eliminating it off of the board. And it has to be one of the pieces that are on that circular pathway and not inside your empire base. So yeah, for instance, if this blue player landed on the squealer removed uh, space, he has to eliminate one of these pieces. Either that one, that one, that one, or that one. And if he were to, by some really freak chance, he were to land two of his uh, pieces on that squealer removed space, then he'd have to remove two from the board and so on. 
And uh, yeah, that's all there is to know about the game. So let's quickly play. Blue's turn. Rolls, he gets a 6 to, I think blue should move, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And since there's no point in taking a hit, but just spinning the wheel since the green player isn't out in the field yet, we can just move the same piece, the other die number, 1, 2. So yeah, green's turn. Green goes, 6, 4, hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. I think green should take a shot at blue by landing on the hit wheel. Uh, the hit space right here and spinning the hit wheel to see if he can get blue oh, and he missed so it's blue's turn 6-6 six, six, he rolled a double and a maximum double at that which means he gets to move 6-6 six, six, uh, either two of his pieces or one of his pieces and he gets to roll again as well so I think the smart move would be to use the opportunity to get his boss character his boss figure the godfather and his henchman because you need to have your boss character be protected by the henchman at all times because if your boss gets hit by the hit wheel by one of the hitmen then the game's up you're done you're out of the game that's a checkmate for you if your boss is eliminated you're done so you have to really pick when and how you need to move your boss across the across the circular board and back into your empire base to win the game or figure out a way to eliminate the other players the opponent players boss to win the game so yeah he's going to use a 6-6 six, six to move each of this uh each of these pieces the henchman and the boss piece six bases up the board one two three four five six and also lands on the hit space so he gets to spin the wheel taking a shot at the green player oh that was close that was close <laughs> Anyway, he has a double, he gets to roll again, and that's a 5-3. So he's going to go 1-2-3, try to take another hit, and move 5, one of his pieces, out of the Empire base. 1-2-3-4-5. And he's got quite a lot of protection around his Godfather piece, and he's got an, a henchman piece on the same piece, uh, on the same space as his Godfather piece, because if, in case... The green player takes a hit and it lands on that space. His henchman gets to make the sacrifice and sparing the godfather right there. But if there were no henchman on that space and, and the hitman landed on it, then the godfather would have no protection, no one to sacrifice their lives. And uh, yeah, they'd be eliminated. Godfather would be eliminated and the game would be up. You would have essentially lost. If uh, more than two players are playing the game, then that that the that player he takes all of his pieces off the board and he's no longer part of the game, and the rest of them continue playing to see who wins. And that's how it goes. You get eliminated one by one throughout the game. Last last boss to survive wins, or the first one to make it back to their home base wins. So yeah, so now it's Green's turn, and uh, Blue had quite a good roll here. Let's see what what comes up for Green. And 6-5, not too bad, not too bad. I think he can get one of those hostage. I'm not sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nah, goes way beyond. So let's just get one of these pieces out here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. And move a 5 to this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. So we're right at the entrance, entrance way for the uh, Blues Empire base. He might just take us hostage. Let's see. So yeah, six and four. So yeah, I think what blue should do is you go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Nah, he can't take that one hostage. So I think he's going to get another one of his henchmen out here. One, two, three, four, five. The reason why he's keeping more than one piece on, on a single space blue is because you need to... That, that gives you more protection in that space, which means that no other player can land on that space as as long as you have more than one piece on on a space no other player can land on that space to take you hostage or whatever so essentially you've got that space occupied so unless you get hit by the hit wheel then you have to take one of your henchmen off of that piece unless you're on the on the one of these saint valentine's day massacre squares in which case you have to take all of the pieces off of that space and uh yeah so I think he's moved his four to add an extra piece of that space, and he's going to move his six, this 
this piece right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right there. Green goes again. Gets a six, five again. So that's a one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think he should make a run for it. I think we should get another one of Green's pieces out here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, we're going to take the little Godfather piece here and scurry him down like that to his henchman piece right here, having covered some ground and also gotten some protection on this square with this other henchman. So this blue player cannot land on this space anymore because this space is occupied by more than one pieces of the green player. And now he gets to move his other five, which he should probably take out another piece. One, two, three, four, five, because he can't move that one because two spaces were he can land on right there, the space that he's going to land on, if I count five from here, one, two, three, four, five, he can't land on that space, so essentially he can't move this character, that uh, that number. So yeah, that was the only choice he had, basically, to move the five, to move one of his henchmen out from the Empire base onto here. If he wouldn't have been able to move at all, then his turn is essentially up. So yeah, let's roll again for blue, five, one, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. I think he's going to have to bring another henchman out, like one, two, three, four, five, and move the same henchman, that other one, like that, to give his boss even more protection. So that's how the game basically works, guys, and you're supposed to just, you know, keep your boss protected at all times and also move him across the board little by little. Sometimes you'll get really good numbers and you'll just, you know, really make it, or you just go really fast around the board back into your empire base. Sometimes you'll be like, you'll have one little boss right here stuck on a one and he can't roll a one and he's stuck there. And yeah, there's just one more uh, mechanic in there, for example. If uh, you have several of your pieces eliminated off the board like that, and uh, if you want to bring one of these pieces back, all you have to do is you have to get one of these henchmen to go around the board once and go across your empire base once to bring one piece back. And if for some reason your boss piece is in danger and you're right, right at home and you can't get in because you're not rolling the right numbers and you're not feeling really good or you want to bring more pieces in to give you a better fighting chance the next time you for the second lap that you're going to try for uh, to complete the round you can move your uh, boss piece across essentially just missing that chance of going home so you can move your boss piece across from that home space to bring three henchmen in up to three henchmen in so yeah that's quite the little decision in fact quite the big decision you have to make there uh deciding whether you want to take the chance because you've got a green piece right here and your boss is completely exposed no henchmen to protect him and you have a you have a feeling you might roll a two and make it in but you don't want to take the chance so you're like all right screw it i'm going to take my so yeah that's all there is to it basically and uh, that's how the game works and pretty interesting game pretty fun game in fact i play play it with my wife quite often because uh, she's really digging it and she's not into those complex board games like D and D stuff, uh, you know, Legend of Zagar and stuff like that. She's not into that stuff because she finds them to be too complex for her uh, taste. Anyway, she really digs this game, and she beats my ass a lot. And actually, <laughs> she's getting really good. And I tried it out with a couple of friends as well. In fact, I've had a, a four-player session as well with my friends in this game, and it's pretty neat and it's pretty. Pretty cool actually, pretty fun little game that you can play with your friends, it doesn't take long to set it up and it, the game lasts for like uh, 20 to 30 minutes at max and it's pretty fun, the, the, the resolve is really fun in this game. And uh, yeah, uh, just a few more things uh, that I missed out on during the review that I, should, I, I think I should point out is that, yeah, as I was mentioning earlier, that once you get your Godfather piece across, for some reason you, you feel like you want to take your Godfather piece across and stay at home, so you get to bring uh, up to three of your henchmen that have been eliminated off the board back into your empire base. And that kind of gives you another fighting chance, especially during the end game when you've lost most of your pieces and you've got just the godfather or another piece and you're not feeling too good about, you know, your godfather being unprotected and you want to bring more pieces in to, you know, kind of essentially jumpstart your, your role again. So, yeah. 
so that's what it is basically pretty cool game and that's it the only thing i wanted to point out before i wrap this up is that the godfather piece can be taken hostage just like any other piece but he cannot be eliminated by having another piece land on that same space and so what all you can do is take the godfather hostage and keep him from moving and try to get as many hit spins as possible to give you a chance to actually get one of these to land on that space where you have the boss hostage and take him out essentially defeating that player and winning the game so yeah but the uh, boss uh, player the one whose uh, boss has been held hostage like that he can eliminate the green so yeah what i was saying was uh the boss player cannot be eliminated by the conventional way of having two pieces land on that same space to essentially take the third one out what you have to do you have to get the spin of the wheel to be able to take the boss player out like that or yeah that's pretty much the only way all you can do is take the boss hostage keep him from moving so that you can have a very good chance of getting uh, him assassinated by one of the hitmen using the hit wheel or keep him you know keep his sorry about the abrupt cuts uh, my phone's running out of memory constantly and I have to you know consistently delete things off my phone to keep this recording going anyway so yeah that's how the game works I really like it my verdict for the game if I were to rate it out of 10 I would say it's uh, it lies somewhere between a 6 and a 7 in fact it's a 7 for me because I really dig the game I'm really enjoying it and you can just you know tease this to anyone out there in like 5-10 minutes and be ready to play with that guy uh, or girl and uh, yeah pretty neat game I really like it and fun little game to be had you know and very underrated I must say and I think there's two uh, Two, at least two versions out there like I mentioned before there's a German version an American version and the one I have here is the UK version the the only difference uh, between these versions the, the differences between these versions are far and few and uh, so the the one major difference between this UK version and the other versions around the, around the world is uh, that the hit wheel is different it works the same way except instead of this wheel you have two cars in which uh, the hitmen are tucked in and then you get to move those two cars around like there there's like a little beam that connects the two cars together and you get to spin them around like that so essentially you've got uh, hitmen in cars instead of hitmen on a hit wheel like this so that's one difference and another difference is that uh, the other versions are not as brutal when it comes to having your godfather eliminated or or the vulnerability of your godfather is not as as unforgiving in the other versions as it is in this one uh, in this one if your godfather is eliminated you're essentially done you're go gone from the game but in other, in other versions if your godfather gets hit or uh gets eliminated he just goes back to his empire base and he can just start back all over again so yeah that's the game right here, Vendetta, the hit game, pretty sweet game, and uh, I really like it. It's called uh, Vendetta, the hit game, and uh, enter the game of your life. Vendetta is here, pretty awesome board game, very sinister premise, but a very fun game to play with your friends and family, and I really like it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'm sorry I've been gone a while, but you know, there's been other things I've been busy in but hopefully this year I'll be a little more consistent with making videos so yeah you should see more of my stuff on my channel this year hopefully because uh, I think I'm, I'm kind of streamlining a bunch of stuff and it's turning out to be um, it's turning out quite well actually so yeah I'll let you guys in on it you know, a little so yeah as I was saying uh, this is my review of Vendetta the board game I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, yeah, expect more videos from me this year because I'll probably be making more of them since I really need to. There's a bunch of stuff I need to get covered. So yeah, until then, until our, one of my next videos, see you later.